Hi, I'm James Hayward. I'm a technology analyst with ID TechX. And at the moment, I'm researching wearable technology. Um, so um, it's a really, really exciting topic at the moment, really popular all over the world. And all, a lot of the big companies of the world are all moving into this area. So we're seeing some really groundbreaking stuff coming out. At the moment, most of the devices we see are wrist-based because um, it's, it's a traditional replacement of the wristwatch with smart items. So for example, next year we're expecting a big um, release of Apple's new Apple Watch, which is one of the most anticipated devices in the area. Some um, people say that they have pre-ordered 50 million units from the suppliers, huh? So maybe yeah. they're going to push it. They're going to they, push the whole market forward a little bit. Well, a lot of people are looking to, do, uh, to, to Apple to do that. A lot of people, when they talk about the Apple Watch and its effect on wearable technology, cite smartphones and the rise of smartphones. Um, with, in that case, the iPhone itself, when it came out, proved hugely popular. A lot of people before it came out said that it would be too expensive, that it wouldn't be right, and yet Apple, Apple, we know how successful the iPhone was. And, and similarly, because of that happening historically, a lot of people are looking at the Apple Watch to do that for wearable technology. So what's going to happen here at the wearables conference? Oh, the wearables conference is going to be really, really fantastic. We've got all sorts of, a real example of how all sorts of people from all across the value chain are becoming incredibly interested in wearables because so many different companies can really affect these devices and, and have an input into this, what will be a massive industry um, we, we forecast that the wearable technology industry will, will reach 70 billion by 2025. Um, this 70 is or 17? Seven, seven zero, 70 billion dollars. Which? Um, what is that? From, from which parts? Like selling the parts? devices? So, for example, we would expect. So, um, so if you look to here after lunch, we have wearable electronics for healthcare. Within the healthcare industry, there is huge potential for these devices as it allows for remote automated sensing of all sorts of body function and all, all vital signs and all this area, which is about taking healthcare from static patient in a hospital being monitored by big, um, large machines that, you, that are non-portable. And suddenly you can take these devices, make them wearable, put them on people, allow them to go about their daily lives whilst we can remotely sense their vital signs. And as I'm sure you can imagine, this is a huge, huge market with huge potential going forward. And, this, and we, we, we forecast that the healthcare market will be the largest sector in the long term for wearable technology. So everybody will have sensors monitoring their health constantly. This is, this is the idea. And whether, whether this, the, the rate of implementation of this is, um, is the main question which we address. And we are seeing a lot of advances recently. The number of um, fitness-based wristbands, which is um, coming out at the end of 2014, is, is they're coming out at a rate of greater than one per week from major suppliers. So we've seen Microsoft, Jawbone, um, companies like this just within the last few weeks, and this is a conference. So in terms of emerging technologies, which we look at at ID TechX, wearable is happening very, very fast. And it's our job to stay ahead of the curve, know what's going to come, see the technologies which are going to allow these devices to really start taking huge market share from, from um, devices that are already there and really growing this into what, like I said, what will, will be a $70, uh, $70 billion industry in a decade's time. And uh, right here on this same, it says down there, energy harvesting, and that's something that could be in wearables. Yeah, so one of the main issues with wearables at the moment, um, and in fact with portable devices in general, is battery life. Um, back a, lot, a long time ago, it, it would be, you have a mobile phone that would have a battery life of two weeks, and everybody expected that as a norm. However, the trend has been much more recently to much higher functionality, high power requirements, and therefore battery life really hasn't stayed, um, really hasn't kept up with these advancements. And especially with wearable devices, the requirement that they have to be small, comfortable, um, fashionable, in good um, shapes which are ergonomic for your body, this presents a huge challenge for battery, um, for battery suppliers. And therefore wearable devices are, are possibly the, are one of the more difficult devices to power for long amounts of time. So 
the, we're looking at energy harvesting applications to provide secondary power sources for these wearables such that you can allow for um, much longer periods of use without having to recharge your battery because this is ultimately what we want. If you have to replace the battery for your device or your devices every day, this is going to be extremely impractical for the consumer. And therefore, we'd want, um, we envisage that energy harvesting as it improves will be a big part of powering our wearable devices over long periods of time. So my swatch, for example, is uh, automatic and you just shake it and it continues forever. It'd yeah. be nice to have that in a smartwatch. Yeah, it really would, it really would. Um, and, and these energy harvesting devices, currently the main applications are in big industry with big temperature differences, um, requiring big movements in order to produce relatively large amounts of power. But as the devices improve, there is a lot of potential to bring them into wearable devices. This is going to be really interesting here. The conference followed the wearables and the energy harvesting, and it's all collocated right here. Exactly, and this is one of the great things about this conference. We c cover so many of the emerging materials which are going to be, make huge impact on, on all of these industries which are covering and more. And it's these emerging technologies which are allowing for these huge market growths which we predict. And the fact that so many different types of technology are all present here today is a huge, gives huge appeal of this conference to, all, to everyone from the suppliers right through to the end users. And this full ecosystem are all going to join here, two and a half thousand people here in the next, in the next couple of days. And it's going to be a really fantastic opportunity for everyone here.